Jamie Rochelle from GitLab's community relations team is here to moderate a conversation with some of GitLab's most active community members, the GitLab heroes. I helped start this program in 2019, and in the last two years, more than 90 members have joined the program due to their outstanding contributions to GitLab. These contributions range from contributing code to organizing meetups to speaking at events, including past GitLab commits. As a member of the GitLab community, there is a good chance that you've benefited either directly or indirectly from the work of the GitLab heroes. I'm so excited that we have some of them here today to share their stories with you. Enjoy. So thank you for joining the talk, Heroes Unmasked, a conversation with our GitLab heroes. This will give you an intimate insight to the Heroes program directly from our heroes. So today I will be your moderator and I'm the evangelism program with GitLab. I assist and manage the meetup programs globally as well as the Heroes program. And if you want to get in contact with me, my GitLab handle and Twitter are below as well. Now I'm going to kick it off to Abel so he can introduce himself. Yeah, thanks, Jimmy. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Abel Ayugawa. I am a GitLab hero. I am also a founder of a company called Softroom, where we build innovative products and launch the market. I personally love networking and meeting new people. Um, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you, Abel. Now I'm going to hand it over to Vlad. Thanks, Jamie. And hello, everyone. My name is Vladimir. I'm based in Brisbane, Australia. And I run my own company called Tomato Elephant Studio, where we do uh, open source consultancy and uh, build software products. I've been a GitLab hero for about two years. I'm really enjoying being part of the program. Apart from that, I'm also part of uh, other open source communities such as Bootstrap and uh, Drupal. Awesome. Mario, you want to give your intro? Thanks, Jamie. Hi, everyone. I'm Mario Garcia from Mexico. I've been an open source contributor for more than a decade and also a, a speaker for, for the same time. Um, I joined the Heroes program three years ago this month, and now I'm doing an, an internship at Terminus DB. Awesome, and congratulations on your internship as well. So now that we've you've met a few of our heroes, I'll give you a brief overview about what the Hero program really entails. So here at GitLab, we believe everyone can contribute, meaning everyone can become a hero. Currently, we have 94 heroes globally, which is amazing, as I just received more applications today. And our key attributes are someone who possesses a passion for GitLab, DevSecOps, and also open source software, um, aspiring to uphold our missions and values. Um, we also want to make sure that folks who are heroes are contributing and not just in code, organizing meetups and other um, going to conferences and talking on our behalf as well, just advocating for GitLab in general. Um, and if you see this QR code, this allows you to, um, it'll take you directly to our homepage where if you are interested in becoming a hero, you'll find the application there and a lot more details about the program as well. So, Let's get started. Are you guys ready for this conversation? Question one. I'm going to kick this off to Vlad, and then the rest of the heroes will follow. How did you first get involved with GitLab? What promoted you to join the Heroes program? I started teaching the uh, open source product to the public about 2013, and uh, that was Drupal, the technology I was very interested in back then. So it's a content management system. And uh, year after year, I started seeing that uh, I needed some other technology that would uh, help me to teach people and give them a bit more uh, streamlined approach to actually how to learn different things IT. I'm not going to go into details, but eventually I um, found the GitLab 
first through the job at about 2016 2017 and then eventually i started using different gitlab features and they helped me to uh, bring different aspects and features of the gitlab to my training uh, primarily drupal first but uh, lately in the last three or four years i also switch off and do some pure gitlab training as well so it came from my work to answer your question first to answer your question first, uh, it came from my work first and then really incorporated in the public training I'm doing. So th that's how I started with GitLab. Awesome. Thank you. And we're really appreciative about, um, you know, going out and teaching as well. Uh, Mario, do you want to let folks know how you first got involved with GitLab and what prompted you to um, join the Heroes program? Yeah. Um, well, I, I just started using GitLab back in 2018. And a year later, um, I got interested in continuous integration, and I really wanted to to start with this topic. And I I just started learning about it and using GitLab CI for that. And I tried to document everything that I was learning. Then I, I heard about the GitLab Heroes program and applied that, that same year. And since that, I, I've, been, I've been active uh, participating in community activities and writing about it. Thank you, Mario. Abel, would you like to share about how you first got involved with GitLab as well? Yeah, sure. Um, so I started using um, GitLab in 2017. Uh, when I recently joined the tech industry. So I started using GitLab as a Android developer, you know, pushing codes and maintaining um, remote repositories there. Now going down to 2019, when I started Softroom, as well as started building uh, the tech community here in Africa, I saw the GitLab Hero program as an opportunity to kind of um, take that to the next level where I get to advocate and teach people on open sourcing and how they can equally contribute to the tech ecosystem. So basically that's how I got to the GitLab, pro uh, the, uh, GitLab Hero program and how I started using GitLab as a product itself. Awesome. I love the diversity that everyone jo learned GitLab or you know came across GitLab in so many different ways. Um, so thank you for sharing. So the next question, what does being a GitLab hero mean to you? Mario, do you want to start us off? Yeah, well, this is an interesting question and, and I've written about it, but I think, uh, well, to, to answer this question, um, not only, having the opportunity to learn more about about how to use GitLab within different kind of technologies and for different kind of projects. But the, the idea of having the opportunity to, to share with the community the, the things that I've learned about GitLab and have the support from community or for, from team members and also get um, get involved with uh, organizing activities for the community. I, I, I think that's what um, being a GitLab hero means to me. Thank you for that, because that also upholds one of our values, which is a uh, collaboration, right? So, um, Abel, do you want to share what being a GitLab hero means to you? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, for me personally, I see myself as a GitLab hero based on two factors or rather pillars I like love to refer to. So the first is community and the second is collaboration. I personally believe in collaboration and I feel being a GitLab hero kind of give you that opportunity to build a better community around you, to be able to be uh, that community part to a lot of open sources out there as well as um, tech enthusiasts, be it uh, beginners or experts, you are there to help them in their own journey, as well as building you know, a stronger community bound to it. So for me, that's been a GitLab hero. 
Thank you. Vlad, would you like to chime in on this one? Sure. Uh, it's kind of an interesting story because I started my company in 2017 after working about 15 years in the industry uh, for different consultancy companies and uh, big tech. And uh, uh, I started working remotely and then I started reading a lot of articles about working remote and GitLab was definitely a pioneer in uh, the area of working remotely. We're talking about 2017, so obviously offices, especially here in Australia, a well-dominated environment, even for IT industry. And, uh, you know, being in IT, I always thought the idea of actually, you know, taking your laptop and going somewhere and working from anywhere it was kind of a dream come true. So when I started my company, I thought, oh, I, wa I want to research the topic. So I read a lot and I saw that GitLab is definitely pushing the topic of remote work and collaboration and open source, everything I was passionate about really far and really start uh, getting into community. So I thought mm, that would be interesting to um, see it on the inside. So I actually applied for uh, one of the positions. Uh, and at that time, GitLab was growing exponentially. I didn't even get reply for my resume apart from that it's been unsuccessful. But then I thought, well, may, I'm sure there is other way apart from contributing code and uh, trying to apply for a job within GitLab. And then I saw GitLab Hero program and I thought, oh, that's great because it can give me an insight of what's happening in GitLab and how they operate, communicate, and bringing on values as well as pushing so much stuff open source, uh, as well as being feeling part of the GitLab, but uh, also getting a bit closer, you know, and like learning from the people who are running the program and who are part of the program. And I never were disappointed. It gave me insights in so many uh, people's life who actually use GitLab day to day, as well as work for GitLab. Awesome. Thank you guys for those answers. Um, on to the next question. What is your most important contribution as a member of the GitLab community? Um, Vlad, you wanna kick this one off? Uh, uh, as I teach a lot, I uh, always appreciate when people come back to me and say, hey, I start using uh, GitLab feature here or GitLab feature here. I think that's that's the most kind of precious contribution when you actually your, um, whatever you teach or whatever you teach your team or show your team comes back to you. Uh, and because that's how I started with GitLab, I was using the uh, competition product uh, for a number of companies uh, to a GitLab until one of my colleagues actually showed me a GitLab and saying, hey, you can do those things much faster. And this is how was I introduced to CI CD as well. So that opened a completely different world to me in terms of how you can build, deliver, test the project and without worrying uh, and doing it manually. So for me, the biggest contribution is when someone comes back and say, hey, I implemented this feature using GitLab. So that's, yeah, uh, I think that that would be it for me. Thank you. And Mario, how about you? Well, I think that would be related with sharing knowledge. I mean, uh, since I, I joined the program um, two years ago, I've been writing about uh, the things I've learned about GitLab and especially how uh, how to use GitLab CI uh, with uh, different um, technologies, and also having the opportunity to to speak at some conferences and, and share th that knowledge. And well, um, I I continuously try in uh, different. Um, well, GitLab CI with different projects, and I really um, like um, share share what I've learned and document through blog posts uh, what what I've been doing with you know, with GitLab. Thank you, and we truly appreciate all your contributions as well. How about you, Abel? Yeah. Okay. So for me, I I would say the growth process of the community itself, uh, because when you probably let's say you host an event, you show people how easy it is to you know contribute to the open source community, how to use GitLab and all of that, and you have that feedback afterwards. People messaging you like, "Hi, Abel, 
this is really cool to use. I've seen how easy it is to contribute to the open source community and how they generally just enjoy and continue to grow. I think that's it for me. Awesome. We're going to keep the conversation going and jump over to the next question. And what advice would you give to people who are thinking of contributing but haven't yet? You know, some folks are a little hesitant to contribute or even use GitLab. So what are some advice that y'all would share with those folks? Um, first off, I would say you should, you should first be um, confident in yourself. When I say confident is um, when you speak with a lot of people that haven't really contributed to the open source community, what they usually tell you is, how do I contribute? What can I contribute? And they keep on giving um, excuses like, okay, I don't know how to code or I don't know how to do this and that. So for someone to easily do that, he can easily contribute to the open source community, regardless of you being uh, a, a coder or a software engineer. With the little knowledge you have, you can go ahead and contribute. You can see people contribute to huge open source projects through probably the documentations or other little things that people kind of overlook. So people can generally start from there. And over time, you can get better and, you know, grow to being uh, better open source contributors. Thank you, Mario. Advice, please. Yeah, something I've learned from contributing to open source is that you don't need a technical background for a start uh, um, contributing to a project. And if you uh, really would like to learn new stuff, uh, this could be an, an opportunity for, for that. And well, don't hesitate to, to ask community members for, for help. Uh, I mean, um, I think that's one of the the reason why I I joined the um, the open source movement at, at first. Thank you. I'm actually taking heed to your advice as well because I'm considered probably non technical as well, and sometimes I have hesitation to contribute or jump into doing MRs and all those different things as well. So, Vlad, what advice would you share? Uh, as I mentioned before, I've been also part of the Drupal community for quite a while, for more than 10 years. And it took me a while to start contributing back to open source. Um, it was mixed of things, uh, but I, I didn't know where to start. Although there were uh, training, uh, I never could finish. For example, there was a hackathon. I couldn't finish the um, patches I started or it never got anywhere. So eventually I got to the formula where you need to build something for yourself. So you have this small project idea or existing project or want to automate something as an example. So you can start there as a technical person. As a non-technical person, you can uh, read the documentation, see if documentation clear enough for you to build something very quick. Uh, again, uh, helping yourself to fix something. So find this one thing you want to fix. And, you know, in particular in GitLab, it can be in many areas. It can be in project management where you're doing something with the board, um, or it can be in uh, automation where you're trying to, you know, uh, send yourself notifications from time to time. You can do all that with GitLab. So while building that project, also keep referring to documentation. You'll find some things that you might be not very clear or something that is challenging enough. And that would be already a first contribution, actually overcoming this hurdle, overcoming this hurdle, fixing it and trying to, you know, also fix something small, but don't let the size scare you because even every small thing prints, you know, bigger and bigger things. So eventually you'll see that, oh, this can be improved and you won't see it straight away. It, it takes time for develop. But again, that's what I'm teaching as well. Uh, don't worry about searching for this thing. Just keep on doing, keep on going for your goal, fixing your problem or building your project. And eventually you find some things that, that you think, yeah, I can improve that. I can contribute more code or I can help to review this issue or I can write a better documentation or tutorial. And this is where the contribution starts, really. Although it started way before it started when you started doing something for yourself. Um, and 
this is how I started and this is how I heard many people started as well contributing. So you don't have to be technical, uh, but I think you need to have some sort of a goal uh, or a mission to, to finish it. Doesn't matter how big it is. Awesome, thank you for that. And I wanna reiterate that when we talk about contributions like um, Vlad, Abel and Mario mentioned, it doesn't necessarily have to always be technical. A contribution to the community can also be, or to GitLab can be even organizing a meetup, right? So there's so many different ways to contribute um, here at GitLab. Next question. How do you think GitLab's open source core model affects your experience as a contributor? Do you feel like you have more or less power to contribute as a result of the GitLab's model? Um, Abel, let's kick it off. Okay, so I will say the GitLab models kind of, uh, uh, it feels more like you have more power to contribute. Um, why I said so is because you have access to uh, more resources to do better. And you know, with more resources, with more resources, you'll be able to contribute much more better and um, effectively. But regardless of that, you can also uh, you know contribute either way. So yeah, I feel it gives more power to contribute better. Awesome, um, Vlad. Do you want to share? Uh, I've been big. Uh contributed to open source and working for, with open source for a large number of years. And I think open source doesn't only comes to the code, it also comes to the, you know, modern government sharing open data models and uh, different statistics. Now we're in uh, times where actually statistics matters, where we can see we can actually get in out of a very tough situation. So any open model in my perspective is much better than you know, closed and proprietary model. Um, the access to a data, access to open uh, core gives uh, more people ability. So you kind of lower in the threshold of contribution. Does, as I mentioned before, it doesn't matter how big or small the contribution is. So um, I'm always pro open data and pro open source. And uh, in this case, you would actually probably would find a contributor where you didn't expect to find them. So it's not necessarily can be a technical community. It can be people from all different backgrounds. But until you actually open your data, open your code, you will never find out where it can come from. Uh, also, a very good example I like to give is uh, years ago, one of my colleagues asked, oh, what's the point of open source software? I don't see how you can earn money. It's free, uh, and uh, I, I, I don't see a point. And I answer them, well, actually, where can you find a, a thousand, thousand free testers? Because once your software gets popular and more than a thousand people using it, literally you have a thousand people testing your software literally for free. So in this case, this exchange gives you a possibility to build much better product with that many testers that you probably wouldn't be able to hire. Thank you. And Mario, do you want to share your opinion on this? Yeah, I think uh, the, the open core, core model of GitLab is it, 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 actually an opportunity for people to to start contributing. And um, the idea that those conversations happen publicly, you can go to the uh, repository and see um, and see what uh, people are working on. And the, the idea that you don't have to um, start contributing on, on a specific project, but the one that you would like to help with. And uh, as I mentioned before, you don't, you don't need to, to have a technical background, you can contribute with documentation, uh, also uh, localizing content from English that most of the, the documentation is in English, but you can translate that to, to your um, language. I mean, I, I speak English as a second language and it's something that I've been doing uh, in the past. And the, the idea that you, uh, 
if you want or if you want to learn, you can contribute with code or you can participate at any of the hackathons that, that GitLab organizes. And well, you will also have the support from team members and, and the community that is actually involved in any of the projects that GitLab is working on. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other points they want to piggyback on um, from the other heroes that just shared their opinion on this? All right. Go ahead and jump to the next question. Have you made friends in the wider GitLab community? What do you like and what do you want to see more of in our community? Um, Vlad, you want to kick this one off? Uh, I actually haven't been to any GitLab events, but uh, I got to know people as a part of a GitLab Heroes program, definitely. And um, I'm following them on social media and what they do uh, in their work life. So that's been quite an interesting journey. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the, the just seeing, you know, different people from different con continents, how they take GitLab and use it in there uh, for teaching, for work. Uh, that's been quite an experience. Overall, in open source, uh, I did go to different conferences and definitely uh, met people there. And I'm probably looking forward to my face-to-face uh, -face GitLab even sometime in the future. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to make any previous conferences. Uh, but so far, the experience digitally has been great. Thank you. And Mario, how about you? Yeah, I, I had the, the opportunity to attend and speak at GitLab Commit in London in 2019. And I, I met some heroes there. And I, I'm, I'm still in contact with them to these days. But also now that um, uh, events are happening in virtual spaces, I, I have the opportunity to, to um, met some other to meet some other heroes, and I, that's why I, I started or organizing uh, the, meet, the the GitLab Middle for for Latin America. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, I, I met uh, a hero for, from Colombia and we've been organizing these events, but also um, organizing uh, other activities. Awesome. It's part, uh, pretty cool to me that we get to, or I get to manage and support, you know, global programs like this, because I get to talk to different people from all over the globe and, you know, build and cultivate relationships. I've been in open source for only three years. And with that and being in the community, um, I have relationships that transpire into the different companies that I've worked for and supported in open source, um, especially because I've been supporting um, meetup programs or the wider community. So it's pretty cool um, that I too have also made friends in the community as well. And how about you, Abel? Yeah, so I personally have made a lot of friends through um the gitlab hero program so the very fact that um gitlab itself is built on core values which is collaboration and others i see that as an like a direct extension to even the hero program as well as the community so through the hero program i've met a lot of um folks out there virtually as well as in person during events and all of that I have got to meet key industry players in Africa through those um, open source meetups and all of that. So yeah, I think it's a great opportunity to, you know, kind of network and meet more people and, you know, kind of have that uh, professional relationship with others. Absolutely, I agree with that as well. Um... We're going to keep this conversation in motion and we're going to jump to the next question. What do you like to do outside of contributing to open source? What are your hobbies? Um, Vlad, go ahead and kick that off and share. Sure. Apart, uh, apart from sitting uh, in front of the computer for a number of hours a day, uh, I like to go as much outside. So I do martial arts. Uh, I go for a run. Uh, I do a bit of music here and there. Actually, my second degree is audio engineer, so I like to record stuff as well. I play drums. 
So uh, and overall, probably looking in to get uh, out away from the devices as much as I can. So any excuse to actually spend the weekend somewhere far away from a technology or internet connection is actually looking good to me. So that's me. Awesome. I was going to ask about the guitars and instruments in your background as well. So um, Abel, how about you? What do you enjoy doing outside of contributing to open source? Yeah, so um, I love playing football. I recently started learning how to play chess. I am still a beginner at chess, but I'm kind of like learning that. And even outside, you know, open source communities, I still like to network. I still like to meet new people, you know, and kind of know each other. So, yeah, that's basically me. Thank you. And Mario, how about you? Well, I, outside contributing to open source, I really like uh, reading. Um, and I, I, I recently bought some, some books that I, I still have to, to read, but I, I really enjoy that and listening to music. Um, something that I really miss, but um, I, I hope that I, I could be doing it again soon is traveling. Um, and apart from that, uh, something that most people don't, does, they don't know about is that my family has, uh, has always raised uh, chickens and that is something that I'm doing also. And well, that's me. Question, Mario, how many chickens do y'all have? Now we have 27. And um, I guess I'll share what I like doing um, outside of contributing. I love to travel. So Mario, I definitely understand, you know, now that things are opening back up, you know, that urge to start planning some trips. Um, I'm a huge music person. I don't know if you can see behind me, but I have like Janet Jackson, like over my shoulder. Um, I have a record player and I listen to my old, um, I collect records. Um, I'm really excited about concerts starting back up. I love live music. And so I'm really looking forward to, attending a live show um, again. So that's what I like to do outside of um, contributing open source and managing the open source programs as well. Um, so many of y'all are part of the HERO steering committee and have been part of the HEROES program for quite some time. Like I said, I've only been here since February, so y'all are much more seasoned than I am. So I would love to hear where you would like to see the program grow in the next year or two. And go ahead, um, Vlad, you could kick it off. Uh, I always like the uh, programs and open source communities that do uh, value the contributions that they give. So I think uh, for me, it would be just finding new people, bringing new people uh, to the table, the idea. So where the, um, the product itself and the community can go to. Uh, it, it's a quite a large project uh, covering different aspects of uh, software development, project management and security, and all 10 areas that GitLab gives. So I think uh, it would be good to see uh, maybe here special, specializing in the different aspects of it. So we can all bounce of each other, for example, if we have uh, Hero Summit and uh, or Heroes uh, Conference, uh, we know that some people are very into the security and so we can actually um, look at them uh, to in ability to learn, but uh, actually knowing that there are people specializing in the areas, I think that's that, that would be quite interesting to see um, that you, you will be able to find them easily and follow their, whatever they do, training, blogging, uh, presentations, uh, contributions. So I think actually uh, focus on a specific uh, area of the GitLab would be would be great to see. It's something I'm looking forward to because uh, most of our jobs are really focusing on one thing. We specialize and really go into in depth uh, in one thing, but always keen to learn things from different aspects. Um, for example, I'm always keen to learn more about security, more about project management, although day-to-day -day basis it only takes about 10% of my work, whereas 90% it's development, code review, team leading. So I would like to uh, 
get a bit more knowledge in the different areas. So, and I think Heroes program is great for that because we have a lot of potential, as you mentioned before, almost a hundred heroes uh, specializing in all different areas, GitLab. So it would be good to see the, I guess, the uh, uh, GitLab hero tracks or different areas where they specialize to. I would really love to see that. Thank you, um, Vlad, for your um, opinion on this. And also, um, I'm taking really detailed notes <laughs> in regards to what y'all are sharing on this question as well. Um, Abel, do you want to share? Yeah. Um, so, okay. I personally want to um, see a growth in um, impact. So, the potentiality is there. But now I want to say in a year or two where the GitLab hero is able to grow its impact on the open source community and ensure that, you know, that kinds of um, standard among others and more be like uh, a, a pal to open source community as a whole. So that impact is what I really look forward to, and uh, you know, um, exploring that, pos that potential as well. So, yeah. Thank you, Abel. Mario, would you like to share? Yeah, something I've been working on since I've joined the program, it's um, creating con more content in Spanish, but something I really would like to see is more people joining us from Latin America. Uh, I mean, we've been organizing uh, the meetup for the region since last year. But I really would like to, to see more people participating and contributing from this part of the world. And, well, um, I think it, it could, uh, well, something that we are planning to do in the following month is um, inviting uh, other people to, to share uh, their experience, not only on, on using GitLab or on how they are using GitLab, for any of the projects that are working on, but also um, knowledge that we think uh, it would be helpful for for other uh, for uh, the community, and well, like um, uh, we are we are having uh, um, a meetup this month, uh, and we invited a. Uh, a developer that recently joined GitLab, and we want to to hear from from him how was the process and what would they want to recommend people that uh, that would like to apply to not only to GitLab but any um, similar company. Awesome, thank you for that. And I wanted to piggyback on your point about um, diversifying. Um, where folks contribute from. One of my goals for the program in the next year is to encourage um, folks in different parts of the world, right, to contribute. Like, I think that's why those questions earlier about if people are hesitant to contribute, how do we get them to contribute or how do we get them to apply if they had, you know, did some pretty great contributions or organizations for on behalf of GitLab, right? So one of my goals is to see in the next year or two um, an even more diverse level of heroes um, applying and becoming active in the community as well. And on to the next question. Actually, that was the last question. Um, so I wanna say thank you so much for all of you who um, participated today and joined us um, on the Heroes Unmasked. Um, this is one of many, uh, conversations that we're going to have like this as we're looking to expand the heroes program and um, grow uh, exponentially so again if you're interested please scan the qr code it will pull up all the information so you can learn more about the program as well as applying if you've already made some great contributions to gitlab so um, any final words or um, from my heroes that are online with us today yeah, so I will just repeat, uh, I'll just repeat the advice that was given earlier to people that are hesitant in contributing to the open source community. Just uh, make sure you just um, 
get out there, try and contribute, even if it's as little as possible. Um, no contribution is too small or too big in the open source community. So um, ensure you contribute and you jump in as early as possible. So that would be it from me. Thank you, Mario or Vlad. Do you have any last words that you want to share about your experience as a GitLab hero and or just to folks that are interested in the program or um, wanting to contribute? Yeah, um, now that, the, that you hear from us what uh, is being a GitLab hero, if you would like to apply and enjoy the program, we, uh, we, we can, you can find us on social media. And if you have any questions, uh, I really, uh, um, I would be happy to help you if you want to join the program. I just wanted to say, thanks jamie for organizing it and bringing us all together and uh having this conversation it's definitely uh, a learning curve for all of us and um, it's a great experience to learn from what we're all doing and uh there are different ways to contact gitlab here's program uh, you can read about it on gitlab website there is a gitter chat uh, and uh, of course you can uh, go and see the hero's profile on a GitLab website, which is a great thing to do. So you can see the diversity that Jamie was talking about uh, of GitLab heroes and what they do. So I'm really enjoying being part of the program. And thanks, Jamie, again. It was a great chat. Thank you. And again, thank you for joining Commit 2021 um, virtually. And we hope next year that we will be face-to-face -face, um, having another Heroes Unmasked. Thank you.